We're gonna, um, I'm, I'm, the whole month of May, I was preached about some, some preaching on some ladies. And so I'm gonna talk about a controversial lady this morning. The controversial. Um, go to me to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. She's full of controversy. John chapter 8, verse 1 says these words. But Jesus went to, now, let me set the text up. Um, Jesus had been teaching in verse, in chapter 7, and he was being challenged by his authority in chapter 7. He was saying, who are you? Look, on the latter part of chapter, chapter 7, it says, um, is this the Christ? When he come out of Galilee, they try to, or, or town of Bethlehem, um, try to put him down, that he was nobody, and make, make him feel, he, they make him feel that he was not the Christ, and they was putting him down, and, and then verse 8, chapter, chapter 8, he goes, and he, he goes to Mount Olive, he prays, but, but Jesus went to Mount Olive, and verse 2, he says, this, but early in the morning, so he was challenged one day, and the very next day, he got right back on his job. Sometime you're challenged and you want to run, but you're going to be a Christ follower the very next day. You right back on your job and go back, go back, go at it, go at it, right at it again. Text in early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him. He sat down and taught them. Verse 3 says, Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had, and they had set her in the mist. Verse 4. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the in the adultery, in the very act. Verse 5. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This, this they said, testing him that they might have something to accuse to which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear them. Verse 7. But when they had continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who without sin among you, let him throw a stone at a first. I want to talk about this morning through the eyes of Jesus. Through the eyes of Jesus. Um, first thing, this, 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 the situation that condemned her was real. How many of us know that, that we all get ourselves into situations? Hold on, I didn't, I didn't talk to you. How many of us know we all get ourselves into situations? Okay, I'll make sure everybody here. Don't y'all lie in church now. One, one for Holy Spirit. How many of us know we all get ourselves into situations? Okay, we got situations. We, got, we, got, we do things that, you know, we shouldn't do by commission or omission, as they say back in the old days. We do things knowingly or unknowingly. Or how many of us know we, we, we can do oops upside? We just forget. And, 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 and the woman found herself in a situation. And, and, and I, 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 I was been praying about this message for a long time because... I always wondered, why didn't Jesus say anything until, until he was challenged? And I realized that if the church would act more like Jesus, God's church would change more lives. And so I'm praying that we would see people the way Jesus sees people. Because the Bible says that we got to, we, if we're Christians, we are, we, we're acting like Christ. We, I said, we're, we're Christ followers. We want to not only act like we're Christ, not only say Christ, but we want to live like Christ, respond like Christ. That means there's some things we should see, not from our eyes, but from the eyes of the other person. When you learn to have compassion from the eyes of the other person, you don't condemn them. You start saying, Lord, you start saying, Lord help them. It's very easy to, to put someone down because, see, we all in this room have our choice of sin. Come on now. Come on now. Everybody in this room has, in matter of fact, Hebrews says, the sin that so easily beset us. We all have besetting sins. Your sin may not be my sin. My sin may not be your sin. But everybody in this room got a sin. May not be cussing, it might be drinking. May not be drinking, it might be homemonging. May not be, it's, you might be white gossiping. Everybody in the room got a sin. And when you realize you got a sin, you stop pointing your finger at everybody else's sin because your sin will point you out also. 
Because nobody here is perfect, no, not one. We all got issues in certain situations. The text says that he was teaching. And he was teaching her, he was teaching the word of God, and, and, and people kept coming, people kept being hungry, hungry. In, verse, in verse 2, they kept hungry, hungry, hungry for the word. They kept saying, God teaches, teaches the word. People, people want to know the word, but here's the issue that people don't want to apply the word. And why know the why, why Paul Timothy said, why ever learning but never come to the knowledge of? Why always coming and learning and coming and learning, but then don't apply what you learn? He, sat, he, he, he was sitting down. Now, Jesus was having school. Usually in, in, in those days, when you, when you notice, he said he sat down. We, we, we in the church, we, we flipped it. When it comes time to teach, I'm supposed to sit down. I'm going to start giving me a chair up here on, on Wednesday night. <laughs> so I'd be more like Jesus. When you preach, you're supposed to stand. When you teach, you're supposed to sit down. I might have both up here, so y'all know when I'm teaching and preaching, we'll go up and down and down. <laughs> he said, he sat down and taught them. We want to have a more of a, of a friendly atmosphere. Verse 3 says, now, then the scribes and Pharisees, now, really, now, real quickly, this was not a setup. People say that the Pharisees had set her up, the catcher and the scribes. The Pharisees were jacked up, but they weren't that jacked up. They wouldn't, let, they wouldn't set them up for sin. That, they wouldn't go hire someone to be a sinner. Uh, or to catch him. What may have happened is that the husband that she was cheating on may have set up. But the, you know, we do that, but, but, you know, brothers, we do that kind of stuff. We'll get somebody back in Jesus' name. Because, see, the man was supposed to be the first one to stone her also. So I, I'm, I'm more like that the husband set up, you know, and pay someone to do something, and they called, because they said they called her in an act of sin. Now, during this time, it was, it was, it was, a, fest, it was a festive time, things was going on, and so also in Rome, having sex was cool. You know, just having, like, like today, having sex outside marriage is cool, just what you did. And so then it's like they got, see, they got caught in the act. I, you got to be kind of stupid to get caught around some preachers. I mean, if you're going to do some sinning, do some sinning. Don't do what you're going to get caught. Don't, okay. The one thing I like about being a community pastor is I live in a community. And I see some of y'all sinning. Yeah, I do. And y'all funny when y'all sin. I never forget one time I went to I went to, with me and Karen went to IHOP, and and I saw someone who was a member of the church. I, as I was pulling up, it was it was in some it was in some extracurricular activity that they shouldn't have been involved in. So I kind of slowed down because they I wanted I wanted them to do, fulfill their, their their journey. And as they was in the extracurricular activity, took that, 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 inhale. I jumped to the car and said, hey, what's up, brother? He said, what's up, pastor? And so he put the, he put the, the stuff behind his back. And I wanted to be like, what's up, man? He's like, no, nah, pastor, we good, I'm good, we good, we good, we good, pastor, pastor. No, I meant, no, no, pastor, we good. I said, okay, bro. I never forget what time I went to 7 Eleven. I'm getting my little Slurpee. Snuggle behind another member. He wouldn't have no Slurpee. Had him a big old bottle of Mad Dog Twins. He had the brown bag before he had the brown bag before he got to the counter. He, he, was, he was an expert. Got to the counter. Who's up, brother? <laughs> Pastor, I already don't pay for it. Just pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> I sigh, man. Lord bless you. You know, I get to watch y'all on y'all sin, and and and. But see, for me, I ain't gonna judge you. You know, that's your issue. Your sin is your sin, cause you. My job is to preach to you, and you be convicted about your sin. If you do, if you you feel something about sinning around me, and you like, I don't got caught by the pastor. This woman got caught by the whole Pharisee, describing Pharisee. I, that was kind of deep. If I'm going to go way down, deep, deep in the jungles of, of, of someplace, you're going to find me sinning. <laughs> but they, she got found. And, and the text says she was found in the midst. She was, she was caught in the very act of sinning. They dragged her out. Don't know where she was naked. And, and just dragged her out of sin and maybe put, maybe put a shoe in her. And they threw her down in the dusty ground. And all these people. 
It's a bad situation. And before you quit the judger, what made her go there? What drove her to the arms of someone else? What drove her to the arms of an adulterous affair? It always takes something to drive someone to something. Can I just get real, real quickly? A lot of times we want to judge the act, but let's judge the, pre, the pre-act. Some things had to happen in the pre-act before the act for him or her. Something happened to her to push her into the arms of someone else, knowing the law says that if she does that, she'll die. What was so dramatic in her life that she didn't mind dying to get out the situation? There's some people who are caught up in, in, in sin so bad they don't mind dying in their sin. I've learned a long time ago to stop judging people because the sin you, that you like and I don't do, I have to relate to it because it says sins I like that I do that you may not do, but there's still sin. You may not do one sin, but you do another sin because we all are sinners. And I stopped judging people because I remember that at one point in time I was doing something similar. We all may have done that sin, but we all did some things similar. And when we learn to stop judging people, people learn that there's a God who loves them unconditionally. Amen. First four, look at verse, verse four says, verse four says that then, then they started challenging Jesus about the sin. The situation that corrupted her, then is the, the sin that condemned her. Text says, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Verse 5 says, Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? What do you say, Jesus? Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 22 and 2 says, If a man is found with a woman lying with a, with a married woman to a husband, them both shall be stoned shall die, be put away. So Israel, that, that the, the curse be moved from Israel. Um, but there was no man there. Jesus knew something was wrong because it should be, it do take two people to adultery to have adulteress. You can't be having adultery by yourself. Am I right about it? Leviticus, Leviticus 20, Leviticus 20, verse 10 says, the man who commits adultery, adultery with another man's wife, he who commits adultery with his neighbor's wife the adulterer and adulteress. See, I like to, sometimes the Bible just says he, and kind of excludes the woman. He said, no, 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 the adulterer and adulteress. Both of y'all going to get die. The adulterer and adulterer shall surely be put to death. But they dragged her through the street, didn't drag him. That old maggot says, hmm. Something wrong in this situation. Someone's being condemned or being judged unjustly. And I know that Jesus is, just, is, is a just God. He, he, the text says, and go back to the text, he, he, says, he said he stooped down. Now, they did this to test him because this is why they did this. Because now, if, if, he, if he did the Moses law and condemned her, they said he'd been too harsh. Jesus, because me and Jesus were teaching love and, and, and forgiveness, and also now his, his situation that kind of iffy, because because the man, see, the issue was that there should have been a man and one both being de- condemned, because he wasn't there. He had the option of giving her freedom or condemning her, depends on, on because of the situation, because it was a flaw in in, in, in in the circumstances in the situation. So if if he followed the law, he would have been too harsh, because the man wasn't there. But if he if he let her go, he was, he was edging towards being following the Roman liberality because in Rome, sexual adultery was not, commit, was not considered a sin. So he was in a, he, 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 if he condemned her, he, he, was, he was too hard. If he let her go, he was too soft. And, and, and I mean that Jesus loves being put, and, and Jesus loves being put to the test. It's almost like answering, the, it's almost like asking to answer a question. I, I, I know that Jesus is the answer. You're going to ask the answer a question like he don't know the answer. But, 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 but Jesus said, but, but Jesus stooped down and wrote, and just stooped down the ground and with, his, and with his finger as though he heard not a word. Now, one scripture I, want, one scripture I like to connect with this verse very clearly is Exodus chapter 31. Exodus 31, 
um, verse 18 says this, and I want you to connect this with, it says this here. It says, and when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets, tablets of the testimony of the testimony tablets of stone written with the what? We shoot back to, to, to John and we see Jesus doing what? Writing with his what? Jesus saying, I wrote the law. <laughs> Anybody who know the law, matter of fact, it was the same finger that I wrote the law with. Matter of fact, I write it on, on the dust with I made you from. So I, I wrote the law on some dust where I, where I made you from. I know I do know the law. I ain't paying attention to you about the law because I wrote the law. It's almost like someone telling your mom about how to cook. Like, boy, please. I know. <laughs> Come on, somebody here. I know it. I'm not even paying. I'm not, you don't even make no sense right now that you know what you're talking about. Shoo. He just ignored him because he, because it was Jesus. Son of God. Then, then verse 7, verse 7, he, 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 I like when he gets, he gets, he gets, he, then, but, but, but you know how we, we hard-headed. Kept, kept bugging him. What you going to do? 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 Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Because see, they, they, they want to trip him up. But Jesus flipped the switch. Somebody said flip the switch. Ah, Jesus is cool. He, 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 literally the Bible says in, in, in the original translation, that he looked, he, he, he looked, then stood up. He, 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 you never know, when you, remember you get in trouble, people will look at you, then they get up. And, and, you know you're in trouble when you look, when they look at you. they sitting down going, now you really want to bother me? If you insist. He who is without sin among you, throw the first stone. Then look at verse 7, look at verse 8, look at verse 8. Verse eight. But down again. He's my, he's, he's my in his business. Jesus, 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 Jesus. He without sin, throw a stone. Now, don't know what he wrote. Whatever he wrote, wasn't no joke. <laughs> he wrote, cause, cause look, look, look at verse, look at verse, look at verse eight, look, 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 verse, look at verse, verse nine. And those who heard it, cause the key word was he who without sin. Ah, if, if he just said sin. It'd been cool. He said, without sin. That messed everybody up. Then he says, he without sin cast the first stone. Nobody in this room is stone proof. Can we get real? Everybody in here is a stone recipient. <laughs> oh, yeah, you deserve a stone. You deserve Give me a Yo, y'all, you deserve, you deserve us. I look right now, y'all, you deserve us. Some of y'all, matter of fact, I, I prove some of y'all. I can prove right now some of y'all deserve a stone. How many of y'all drove on the highway? How many of y'all drove on the highway this morning? Okay. What speed limit? <laughs> a speed limit 65? How many of y'all did speed limit? You both obey the laws of the land, right? I mean, you went 66, stone. Let, 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 me, let me get the rest of y'all who didn't sin. How many of y'all drove to church this morning, came down Bancroft, and went, and went about 26 miles per hour? Because speed limit is what? 25. Everybody in the house sins. Got some stony tendencies, got some stone tendencies. And, and, and the issue, and the issue is about this. This message that it's not about giving you grace. It's simple but that you realize you shouldn't be so quick to throw a stone when there's a bunch of rocks around your feet. But by the grace of God, God has shielded you from getting killed yourself. So some some of us try to pick sins of stoning. Well, I don't. I don't do that. 
Yeah, but you cuss. Poof. See, some of y'all got cussing down pat. I love the Lord, but don't say nothing wrong. I will tell you how I feel in Jesus' name. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't cuss. Ooh, I like some gossip. Stone. I don't gossip or cuss, but I don't mind a drink every now and then. <laughs> Stone. I mean, like, you know, then y'all got levels of sin. You know? You know, you, don't, you may drop it like it's hot every day. I'm just a once a month. You still sinning. Whether it's once a day, once a month, a sin is a sin, that's a sin is a sin. Am I right about it? You may, you may only drop it once every six months. It's still a what? Stones. So how, do you, how dare you go and throw a stone when someone does a sin that's not your choice of sin? Because everyone in this room has a choice has a sin. You know, you know how you have your, like for me, my favorite drink is a wine punch. Y'all know, come to your house and get some wine punch. That's my, that's my, juice, that's my drink of choice. Some of y'all have a sin of choice. It's called easily beset you. You have justified, it's okay. You be like, Lord, you know, Lord, forgive me, you know my heart. He says, you're right, I do know your heart. And, you be, and that sin no longer is a sin, it's kind of something that you just pray, pray for me. How long I got to pray for you on the same sin over and over and over again? But it's not that other sin, but it's a sin you still do continue. It's an habitual sin. But you, do you turn around and point someone else on their sin when you forget the sin you're doing? And churches have a tendency of always pointing fingers at people, forgetting you were once, matter of fact, you still might be sinning. Who are you to condemn anybody? When you when you walk around sinning, not that sin, but another sin. And and when Jesus says, "He without sin, throw a stone," everybody had to go and say, "Oh." No, no look, 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 look at the text. It says, "And those who heard it, being what?" I'm, it's not my job to go around going, "I wonder what y'all doing." I wonder what y'all doing. No, no, it's my job to preach and the Holy Spirit convict y'all. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be caught around your, your, in, your, in your backyards, look to your windows. I don't, that ain't my job. My job is to preach because the Holy Spirit will find you out. The text says, think about the conscience, went out, went out one by one, beginning with what? They, they got the most sins. Come on, come, oh, come on, old folk. Don't y'all be like, Oh, God, no, y'all got, some, y'all got some sin. Come on, old people. Y'all got sin down pat. When you get old, you get real good in sinning. <laughs> <For a little. laughs> you get good, because you, you done been there, done that, know, know how to do the right thing. Nah, I don't know. I'm a sin expert. <laughs> Oldest man said, nah. you got to go. <laughs> See you later, Jesus. <laughs> Little baby had a rock. <laughs> but then the text says, he started writing in, in, in the sand. Little baby said, oh, that's when I tip my sister side the head. <laughs> Bye, Jesus. Because <laughs> all have fallen. And no one was there. No one was there. Romans 3, 10 says, as it's written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Go, 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 go to that verse right quick, Romans 3. I want to hit there for just a minute. There is none righteous. Verse 11 says, real quick, so all, there is, he, said, he, said, he said, there is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. Verse 12 says, all have what? All have become there's none who does good. No, not. I got how, okay, how holy you are. I'm going you sing, shout, jumping around. You, all of us have turned aside at one point of our lives. Some of us are turning and we're still trying to stop from turning. So we all have made mistakes and messed up. Because 
same verse, same chapter, Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all been there. We've all messed up. And, and by God's grace and mercy, we, we, we're saved and we're walking towards his, his mercy. But we all can't point for his dormant because if it had not been for God's grace, we wouldn't be here right now. How dare we condemn someone who has maybe fallen something we have not fallen, but we have all fallen off something else. Wrote the, finger, wrote the sand in the finger, and then Jesus noticed something. Notice in the text now, what you, what you didn't read in the backdrop, in the beginning, it was not just describing Pharisee, but also was there. The crowd. Remember, remember the people coming to ask you to teach? I mean, he, was, he, was, he was in the middle of teaching a class, wasn't he? And you know when Jesus, when Jesus showed up, crowd showed up. So it was not just the 400 scribes that, that Pharisees left. It was probably thousands of people. Because a stoner was a fun thing to do. Because everybody, everybody was being righteous and being holy and, and didn't mind throwing stuff. But when Jesus says, he who without sin, the text says the students left, the old people left, the babies left. All of a sudden, this huge place, there was nobody there but Jesus and the woman. Isn't that deep? Now, the whole time this is happening, she's in the ground in a fetal position because no one want to give someone, no, nobody want to see, see a rock coming out. She's probably hiding her face and, and, and just hearing this, this, the footsteps and hearing Jesus talking. She's probably hitting down and, and she's probably terrified. And, and look at verse, look at verse, look at verse 10. And, and then Jesus says, um, woman, where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? First time she probably even looked up from the ground. And, and that's, some, that's something we have a problem with sometimes. Sometimes we, ju we, ju we, ju we judge ourselves too harsh. We condemn ourselves so harshly that, that Christ wants to give us, give us an opportunity to move up because we're, we're, so, we're so guilty and we're so, we, we, we carry guilt too much. We carry unforgiveness too much. We, sometimes you don't know how just to, to forgive yourself. Sometimes you, 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 can, you can already be forgiven, but because you're carrying the guilt of your past sins, you still keep your head down. Learn how to, somebody said let it go. There, there, there's some things you have done in your life, beloved. You have to learn how to just let it. Because if you don't, you'll be free with your head down. Why be free with your head down? I know who I, I know who I, I know who I was. I know who I am. I'm cool with both those people. Let's try that. I know who I was. I know who I am. I'm cool with both of them. Because if, if I wasn't who I was, come on, y'all, come on, some, come on, somebody, come on, somebody, come you are. If, if I didn't go through what I went through, because some of that stuff was the learning process, was the pruning and the fighting process, but give me to realize I need Jesus. So I'm cool with who I was, I'm good with who I am, and, 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 and I'm good with that because it, 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 it takes a journey to get me to where I am today. But I have to learn, to keep, lift my, I can't keep my head down because I'm free. Some of you right now, lift your head up. He who the Son set free is free indeed. Can't no one point a finger at you because you, you, you got this issue and they got that other issue? No, no. Learn to say, God, here I am. Help me with my situation. Help me with my issue, God. Help me to walk according to the word, God, because God says no one can accuse me but you. Help me, God. Because see, when you stop trying to let, when you stop seeking people's approval, you can lift your head up. Look at verse, look at, look at verse, look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. Not, not, let me make three points here. Situation that corrupted her, the sin that condemned her, and lastly, the Savior that changed her. She said, no one, Lord. Now, I know she, she went through a transformation because she knew she should be dead. She said, no one. And Jesus said, key word, neither. That's a choice. 
And I could slam you. Because I'm the one with the big rock. Matter of fact, I made the rocks. Matter of fact, they're going to crowd my name. I could crush you. But because of my forgiving, because according to Romans 5, y'all should know Romans 5, 8. He says, while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. I mean, he already knows about dying for us beyond ourselves. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten. Whosoever believed in him would not probably have everlasting. He already knows about dying for us and, and showing compassion. So the, wonder, the issue is, when we learn to live like Christ and start showing compassion for other people? Then he tells us something that's real important I want to get to as I, as I get ready to get done. He, tell, he, he says, neither do I. He says, go and sin no more. Look, look, look. He said, neither do I condemn you. Now, this is important. Go and sin no more. He's not saying you're not going to sin. He's saying, go and avoid sin situations. How many of you know that sometimes situations and people put you in the sin? Come on, y'all. How many of you guys people here, there's certain people in your life that you know if you go with them, you're going to do some sin? Come on. Well, y'all, y'all, come on. I need some people who are real. I mean, you, 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 you've been trying, you've been in church for, 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 you've been church for five, five years, you've been going straight. All of a sudden, little John call you. Yo, dog, I'm in town. Nah, man, I, go, go, man, I know you go, man, I, man, I know you go to church, man. I saw you online. I saw that man, but yo, man, I'm in town for like two days, man. Let's go hang out. I chill. What little John gonna make you do? Cause little John hang with sin. Sin hang with little John. You hang with little John. What you gonna do? Sin. So once you learn to avoid sin's situations. If, if he calls you at night, at 11.30, and say, what you doing? Say, I'm asleep. Don't say the word, nothing. Ah, y'all know. Y'all know. Because that means you must want to do something. And since you ain't doing nothing, and you want to do something, let me help you do something. Let me come on over to your house and just, we're going to watch some TV. <laughs> Slap in some, the notebook. <laughs> Love story. Later sing the blues. Boomerang. <laughs> let the oops happen upside my head. You have to learn to avoid the sin. And, and, and don't, you, you are not strong enough. Your flesh is too weak. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> you hear me? Man, I don't care how strong you are, you could be preaching for 25 years. Run, A.B., Run. Because y'all, see, the worst, the worst kind of sin is holy folk sin. Because see, y'all some sinners up in this joint. Oh, yeah. Oh, church folk know how to sin good. And can sin with the Bible. One guy told me, you know, two sheets can't, two clean sheets can't get dirty. Two clean sheets can't get dirty. I went home and started rubbing some sheets together. <laughs> he right. How can two saved folks sin? I said, hmm. The one, the one, one, one person said, the Bible said God will give you what you need. If you need somebody, he'll give you release at the right time. I said, hmm, that's sounds Bible. Then, then, then my, 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 my crazy son said to me, Dad, um, the Bible says I can have me wise as I, as, I, as, I, as I can afford. Boy, you can afford the one you got. <laughs> <laughs> Get, leave that scripture alone, son. <laughs> that's old time. But that's old time. Dad, you, you said all scripture. I said, but I ain't. Yeah, that's boy. 
My son was good with that Bible stuff, boy. Them kids was... And you'll take that Bible and you'll flip it? Man, justify stuff? Well, you know, it said, don't get, it said, don't get drunk. This I couldn't be sociable. <laughs> come on, come on. How many of y'all sociable? I ain't drunk, Pastor. I'm just sociable. I ain't going to hide. I'm just like this here. How you doing? I just feel happy. It love, see, you all oh girl, good. Don't, don't, t- don't. Some of y'all confessing right now. <laughs> you know, avoid those sin situations. Because when Jesus forgives us, he's telling us, I'm giving you grace. Because I could give you judgment. I'm giving you a chance to make it right. Because every time you sin, you make me look bad. Because when you sin, who's watching? Not just Jesus, but who else? The world. And all you say, sanctified, sinning people, make a saved Jesus look bad. It's disturbing when I see Christians who, who are Christian and, and they start cussing. I can cuss proficiently. I mean, start flowing. I mean, flow with, with flowism. I mean, you think you can cuss, you would say for like four or five years, you would you, you forget some words. There's people here who got, I'm like, where did that come? That must be a new cuss word. They just start flowing like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, good night. And they get a rhythm going, and, 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 but, they, but they turn around and sing a song. It makes not only you look bad, it makes God look bad. And stop telling me, well, the Lord knows. He does know. Why don't you try to hang with people who don't want to sin? Why don't you try to hang with people who, who, who are trying to strive for holiness? Why don't you stop making excuses why you can't? It's hard for me to cuss now. I used to like cussing. Come on, y'all. Can I, 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 I testify? A good cuss is good for you in the back of my day. Good, come on, man. There's some things, Deacon and Ellen, that a good cuss word will make the point clear. Y'all with me this morning? There's some words in the English vocabulary that don't make the point clear that a good old cuss word will. But I had to, as I got saved and became a preacher, I couldn't say those words. So I had to expand my vocabulary. I couldn't cuss. Now, yeah, yeah, don't taste good. I, I, I said drink good. Gin and seven up, gin, gin, tangerine and gin, tangerine seven, you know, some gin and juice, Coke 151, some JB, some Cavassier, <laughs> E&J, man, I get some, I get some two, two, some, some, some former old cider. Ooh. I got to go home. <laughs> some two of old cider gives me kind of tippy now. Because my body is not is no longer my immune. My system got unused to drinking. Has your body got unused to sinning, Rick? If you can keep sinning and flowing and sinning, then you have not got your body immune from sinning yet. I mean, you have not been, been, time, been spending time with the Lord. The reason why my, my, I can't handle even a, a bottle of, of old apple cider, because my, I used to can drink a fifth and go play ball. No big deal. I can't drink a glass now and I go to sleep. Because <laughs> my body has got we adjust to this natural state. You can keep sinning and don't be convicted. That means something wrong. Either the Holy Spirit has tipped out and left you, or you keep rejecting the Holy Spirit and sin don't have an effect on you anymore. Something wrong. Jesus says, go and sin no more. Avoid sin situations. 
And you know, I've learned one thing also. You can avoid sin. And you can avoid sin situation. Because Jesus, look, 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 at verse, look at verse 12. Jesus says, I am the what? He who what? Shall not but, but have the what? Because sin means darkness. But if you follow me, you'll be in the light. You follow my ways, you'll be in the light. If, if you keep following you, you'll keep being in dark and keep trying to hide your sins. But if you follow me, you stay in the light and you're not ashamed. Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs uh, 28 and 13 says, He who covers his sin, he who covers his sin will not prosper. But of who confess his sins and forsakes them will have what? Beloved, you have to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. You have to learn to start making a conscious choice to avoid the sin situation. Because let me tell you this right now. As long as you're alive and not in the grave, you're going to sin. Newsflash. You're going to sin. You can't avoid it because you're fleshly. I don't care if you're 90 or a two-year-old, you're going to sin. You may not sin like the rest, like, like some other people, but sin's in you. The issue is you learn to avoid sin situations so you don't sin. You, you're, not, you're not sinless, but you sin what? Because you've been, your sins are covered by Christ. You're covered by Christ. But you're sinless because you realize you're, you're offending Jesus. So this morning, I'm not asking you to say, Lord, I'm coming to Jesus Christ. I'm going to be perfect. That ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen. I'm not telling you to come to Jesus Christ and you're going to walk around and never do nothing wrong. That ain't going to happen. I'm not telling you to come to Jesus Christ. You're going to stop cussing today. That ain't going to happen. What will happen, though, you'll be in process. And, I've, and, all, and all, over time, you realize, man, it's been two weeks and I ain't cussed yet. It's been 30 days and I ain't had a drink yet. Because see, what you, when, when you come to Christ, you get salvation, and he gives you another gift, the Holy Spirit. And that thing, that, that person starts convicting you of your sin, and pretty soon, you just don't want to sin no more. You get the gift of everlasting life. I'm asking you today, not to come to Jesus to have a perfect life. Not here. You won't have a perfect life here. That's, in, that's heaven. But come to Jesus and start the process of your transformation. Because we're living in the land of, of, of the dying, going to the land of the living. As you keep dying to yourself, you'll live in heaven. So this morning, if you're here this morning, don't change nothing about you. Well, Pastor, you don't know my sin. You don't know, my, yeah, you don't know my sin. Pastor, I, I got to go fix it. Don't fix nothing because you might fix the wrong thing. Jesus says, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall. All you have to do is just call on Jesus and come as you are. Don't adjust nothing. Your hang-ups, your issues. Christ wants all of those. Because he'll use some of that stuff that you think is unusable. Because some of that stuff you got is transferable. It is. Some skills I use when I was a thug work, work while I'm saved. <laughs> There's some transferable skills that he uses and, and blows your mind. Because he's God. So if you're here this morning, I don't want you to change it. I don't want you to change I want you to realize I need Jesus. I need a Savior. I need something in my life to help me walk it away. I need something in my life to help me fulfill my destiny because I know there's, there's more of a life than just this. And the great question I'm going to ask myself, at some point I'm going to die. 
And when I die, what will happen? Well, I have the answer, beloved. If you die in Christ, you can go to heaven. Then everlasting life with him. Die out of Christ, I'm sorry, you're going to go be in hell. Which is separation from him. So you're here this morning. While the believers are praying, those who know Christ are praying. If you're here this morning, care you are for the first time, came many times, I'm going to give you three, three opportunities this morning. First opportunity is that you will come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That you believe that Christ died for your sins. He rose on the third day. And right now he's sitting next to, next to God saying, he's covered. He's your child. You're here this morning. You've never confessed. You've never, you've never said the sinless prayer. you never asked Christ for forgiveness in your life. You're here this morning. You've never asked for forgiveness by, from God. And you want to start the process. Worry about nobody else. This is just you. If you want to start the process today, all you have to do, Pastor, I want to start the process. Just raise your hand, and we'll go and lead you to the prayer and start the process. If you're this morning, you want to, you want to be led in the prayer of confession, would you please raise your hand? Say, Pastor, I need Jesus this morning. I need, I, need, I need to say that prayer. I need to come. I need to get myself clean. I need to get right. Online, wherever you are, you need to say that prayer, please. Start the process. Raise your hand. Secondly, you may have been in church your whole life. And somehow you kind of ran away from church. Ran away from this and that. Or well, somebody in church even hurt you. You blame them. By blaming them, you blame God. It wasn't God's fault. It's people's fault. This morning, as you're here this morning, you realize God loves you still. You want to come back home. Real simple. Pastor, can I come home? Sure you can. You're here this morning, you want to come back home. Would you please, at your seat, just raise your hand. Pastor, I want to come back home this morning. I'm tired of being away. I'm tired of being lost. I'm tired of being away from the faith. Come on back home. And thirdly, you don't have a church home. The Bible says, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not build against it. The Bible says, he gives apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, for the equipment to say for the work of the ministry. I'm what's called a pastor. I believe about you the way God believes about you. God said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God said you're the apple of his eye. And God said, you are blessed to be a blessing. And I believe that about you. You're not a mistake. You're not dysfunctional. No. You're the apple of God's eye. It's my calling by the preaching and the teaching of God's word to pull the blessings of God out of you this morning. Every day of my life. You're here this morning. And God has said, this is home. I would love to be your pastor this morning. All you got to do, at your seat. Just raise your hands and pass on me part of this family. And we'll be... I see your hand. God bless you. I see your hand. God bless you. Let's just raise your hand. Say, I want to be a part of the family. Raise your hand. Real simple. Real simple. Just raise your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I feel there's more. Worried about the timing, the moment, my first time. Now is the day of salvation. You might be embarrassed. <laughs> I'd rather be embarrassed than go to heaven than be proud and go to hell. So you hear this morning one more time as I close. Whatever it is, salvation, restoration, a membership, I beg you, if you haven't, if you haven't raised your hand, would you please set yourself free and lift a hand today that you might be set free by God. Father, bless those who are here in the sound of my voice. God, keep them and guide them until we meet again. It's in Jesus' name we do pray.